What is up everyone? So today I'm going to teach you some tricks that I've uh, found over the period of time where I had to work on my 3D printer on um, extrusion issues and also um, misaligned prints where I have layer shifts. Uh, we're going to go over, over the issues that I had and how I fixed them. So let's get into this video and see what it's all about. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is layer shift. Okay, as we all know, the printer is going to print something like this. So if we're printing a square, right, it's going to go like this. And then all of a sudden you get a perfect layer shift that has an offset from here to here and it starts printing all janky. And then all of a sudden it starts printing nicely. If I find a picture, I'll put it in this area so that way you can see what layer shift looks like. Okay. Well, what I found out was my supply voltage was not maintaining 24 volts. I have a Black Widow, TiVo Black Widow, and a CR10S5. Um, but the Black Widow itself is running a 24 volt power supply, and I was only getting 18 volts. Okay? So what would end up happening is, as I print it, the motors the stepper motors would take up a certain amount of power and so would the extruder so as it's printing the heads printing in this direction what end up happening is if this motor's running this motor's running and then the bed's motor running and then the heater as well all at the same time the voltage would drop it would allow the motor from left to right to skip so it would skip and then it would start printing again and continuously print it, the first layer would have been messed up but then it would print and then everything would be fine and it, it was driving me insane so the first thing you want to do is check your voltage on here okay so this is a 24 volt power supply and I was only getting 18 volts okay so I hooked up uh, if you look right here you got positive voltage negative voltage ground neutral line okay so your line in and then the voltages that are going out all right to increase and decrease your voltage it says adjust right here and as you turn it uh, clockwise the voltage increase as you turn it to uh, counterclockwise the voltage decreases and that's the little uh, thing that you need to adjust with the Phillips okay if you adjust this right here and you take your uh, your negative and positive lead uh, with the meter um, a multimeter and read this out and it's not reading anything above uh, what your power supply gives you because typically it's 24 volts it should put out like 28 or something like that on a strong power supply I do recommend a Minwell uh, so if you have a cheap Chinese printer definitely upgrade it because this is a cause of a fire uh, if this gets too hot these are typically what catches your printer on fire so what you need to do is put the negative lead on and the positive lead and then uh, adjust this system here I think it's like a potentiometer or something but you adjust the voltage there and if your meter adjusts up or down you know that your power supply is okay you need to adjust it to the proper voltage you need uh, for the output whether it's 12 volts or 24 okay um, so mine was registering 18 no matter if I turn this up or down it would still remain at 18 so this was a bad power supply uh, I got the Minwell swapped it out never had an issue with layer shift again um, and what, what threw me off guard was the fact that I've been running this for a couple of years and I never had any layer shifts or any issues at all uh, this finally gave out and that was the problem remember when uh, checking the power that there's uh, 110 or 220 depending on where you're located in the um, the world uh, keep in mind that these are hot and they will shock you if you touch them uh, the line in uh, part of it okay so if you're not you know good with electrical have someone who's experienced or a professional uh, check that for you okay and then if you look here on the side this power supply actually does 110 and 220 so I wanted to point that out so by uh, sliding over the switch from left to right 110 is on the left 220 is on the right keep that in mind uh, check your power supply and make sure it's on the right voltage 
um, before hooking anything up. So now let's talk about extrusion diagnostics uh, or diagnosis. When you're diagnosing your extrusion issue or failure to extrude, um, most people go and buy a whole new setup, motor and everything, right? Spend a fortune on this stuff. This is a Hermes. It's actually Hamera. Uh, for some reason, they still have the Hermes name on it. For some reason, they got sued and all that stuff from E3D. So if you look it up, it's not Hermes. It's going to be called Hamera. So keep that in mind. This is not the extruder I'm using. I'm going to install it on both printers. Um, it's just I haven't got around to it. But I wanted to explain to you, based on the design, uh, mine is actually with the heat sink on top and then the hot end at the bottom. I do have a volcano hot end. It's a replica. It's a ripoff. It's Chinese. Um, but, I mean, it prints well. Okay? So, that being said, once you buy a volcano, it comes with your heat sink or heat break. And then uh, your heat break here. And then you have your long volcano nozzle. Okay? And then your heat sinks up here. Okay? The issue is, when, when I first got it, uh, what would end up happening is on my drive screw, okay, the adjustment here, I had this torqued down a lot, okay, thinking it's going to grip. But since it's not a uh, compound drive system, what ended up happening is as I tightened down on it, it was pushing the drive gear into one side, stripping out the material, and once it stripped it out, it would no longer extrude. Um, also, it would keep popping, so I'd hear a click, click, click 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 and it, all it was doing was digging into the material messing it up so it was not uh, pushing it down at all okay so I backed off on the intensity of the the pressure that it was putting on this since it did not have two drive gears on one on each side driving this filament down um, that became an issue okay so I backed that off and then boom it start printing everything life was good right Volcano prints well. It's amazing. Um, the thermistor that you get, I do recommend the one with the threads in it. So not the one with the glass bead, but the one with the thread. If I find it, I'll put it up in a little picture of it. But basically, it threads directly into your heat block. Okay, I do recommend that. It'll look something like this with the wire sticking out. All right, and then all of a sudden, months later. 100 prints later or whatever it was uh, It stopped printing again, okay? Well, what ended up happening was I wasn't paying attention uh, There's a three millimeter uh, filament Diameter and then there's a 175 1.75, okay? Uh, and what what happened is when you buy your um, when you buy your your volcano heat block, it came with the three and the 1.75 nozzles, as you can see here. Let me see if you can see this on camera good. But the diameters are big on the three, and then the 175 smaller. I didn't know that. I wasn't paying attention to the hole. All I wanted, all I was curious about, was the the diameter, the extruded part of it. So these are the 0.8 uh, nozzles. This one's actually a 0.4. I just picked it up randomly, but I print with the 0.8 because the, the larger printers, I, I print larger things, okay? So what ended up happening is, no, it didn't plug up, but when I, I print, I like to use, you know, your stainless steel um, little thread insert here, and I like not the stainless steel, all stainless, but I like the ones that have your Teflon coated stuff, with the PTFE or whatever it's called. Uh, this stuff inserted into it, right? This is all fine and dandy because when you're printing, um, it's coating the inside of this, okay? And what ends up happening is it gunks this up, and then once it gunks it up, it kind of keeps your um, filament from extruding nicely so your extruder or your extrusion starts pushing back 
and then it starts hogging out back here this heats up and then it starts leaching into here and making this all gunky so what I like to do is I like to use the ones with this insert in there okay so this one's messed up and I'll show you why it messed up so I like to use this just so that way it's a barrier and it keeps my filament cool until it reaches this okay and the heat block all right because I don't need it plugging up here this ain't doing me no good okay what ended up happening is I swapped out the nozzle because I crashed the the nozzle into the bed or not the bed but a part as it was printing um, because it skipped uh, when I had the print issues well so I, the nozzle or this right here the throat broke okay so it bent so I had to replace this I replaced it put a new one in and then I figured well heck this is pretty gunky I'm gonna just replace the nozzle too so that way because this had a lot of prints on it so I figured I'd replace it anyway because I had a whole bunch well it turns out that I replaced it with the larger diameter hole and then when I started to print this tubing in here the PTF tubing or whatever it's called slid out and when it slid out it slid right into this because it's the same diameter and then boom as you can see it plugged up it was actually this way but yeah it got smashed and it plugged up that kept my print from printing and it was driving me crazy I put a um, a TIG welding rod straight down to see if it was clear everything was clear everything was good except for when it hit here and that I took off the tip and then realized that this slid down so that was my major issue and um, why my filament would not extrude anymore so keep that in mind when doing this stuff I don't recommend the Bowden setup I do recommend direct drive only um, and if you have the money I do recommend this setup only in theory because you're having two drive gears uh, push this filament down instead of one which could potentially just grip on one side and then hog it out eventually if there's any backlash this is a more tried and true setup or in theory it is I'll put it to the test I'll install it later and see how good it is so that's going to complete today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope you were able to get something out of this and fix your 3D printer if you're having issues. But that's all I got for you. Um, it's a real simple fix. I was just rambling on on this stuff only because I know it's real frustrating. And just looking at it, it's just like, why is it not working? Well, those are the things that you should look into before you go out and buy new components. So that's going to be all for me today. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, definitely consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.